Hey, what's up everybody? It's Andy with LightenUpAndShoot.com and today we're going to learn a little bit about Adobe RGB, sRGB. More like, what RGB are you talking about? Alright, I thought it was funny. In any case, in all my years I've never come across something that is so complex, so misunderstood, and so easy like color spaces. In total light and up and shoot style, we are going to iron this out for you guys and gals. But to do this, we're going to have to go back to the beginning. And the beginning is ICC, which stands for International Color Convention. ICCs were invented because of the absurd amount of equipment that is available on the market today. Just think about all those monitors, printers, cameras, etc. They're all different. So how do we keep them all communicating perfectly with each other? You got it, ICCs. ICC is basically just a standard that maintains each device communicating perfectly with each other so that they're not playing broken telephone and messing up your images. It's a way for your image to talk to your monitor and your printer and these profiles make sure that when your image says it's red, your monitor displays red, your printer prints red, and so on. It's basically a huge paint by numbers game. The ICC is gonna take your image and translate it to the correct language that your monitor, printer, scanner, what they're speaking. So what language is your camera, printer, monitor, and all these things talking? Well, in short, they're called color profiles. Color there's a million color code profiles, but in photography, we're going to focus on the two most popular, which are called sRGB and Adobe RGB 1998. There's a million more you've heard of, Profoto RGB, Apple RGB, RGB, Hasselblad RGB, but let's not worry about those right now, since all it's going to do is confuse it even more. sRGB and Adobe RGB are it. The color space is basically your color capturing ability, your color displaying ability, and your color printing ability. When you set your camera's color space, you're basically saying, please only capture these colors that are available in this color space. So obviously, we want the biggest color space available. Why on earth would we want to miss out on all those beautiful colors? But the biggest is not always the answer. You heard me right, ladies. Bigger is not always better. Well, here's where the confusion starts, but do not worry. This is lighten up and shoot. So what color space do you choose? It comes down to one very simple question. How are your images going to be used? And most importantly, reproduced. Let's start off with sRGB. sRGB is the smaller color space. The S really stands for serial, but some people say it's say it stands for standard. Scientifically, it's incorrect, but I see where they say the standard. It just makes more sense. But here at Lighten Up and Shoot, you know we like to change stuff around to match our mentalities a little bit better. So in total Lighten Up and Shoot style, the S stands for smaller. This way, you can remember it a little bit easier. sRGB is technically the inferior color space only because of its size. Stop grinning, ladies. But it does not mean, I repeat, it does not mean it is not the right choice for you. Let's learn a little bit more about sRGB to give you a little bit more insight about which you should choose. First of all, sRGB is going to give you the best results directly from the camera. So if you're not into post-processing or you don't feel like post-processing, sRGB is the one for you. The colors in the sRGB color space are going to be more punchy and more saturated. So if your images look a little bit dull, try switching to sRGB. It might work out for you. So that's plus one sRGB. Second, sRGB is going to give you the best results if you're shooting for the web or just to display it on your TV monitor, uh, it's the best one because most monitors and TVs, 
they are defaulted to that sRGB color space. So since those are defaulted to the sRGB color space, you have that perfect communication between them, making sRGB the choice for you. Plus one sRGB. Third, printing. I know, I just said it's the best for web and TV and everything, but it could also be the best one for printing. If you're printing at home using one of those uh, Epson printers, or if your lab is not that professional, the sRGB color space is going to be much better for you because it's going to maintain that communication consistency yet once again. So another plus one sRGB. Are you convinced yet? Well, don't go switching over to sRGB just yet. Here are the downsides. The biggest downside is definitely a smaller color space. A smaller color space means less color. Minus one sRGB. The problem with less color means less post-processing is allowed before you damage the image. For example, if you are trying to fix skies and stuff like that that have these huge gradients, sRGB might not be the color space for you because you don't have as many colors. Minus one sRGB. Now that you know the good and the bad about sRGB, let's learn a little bit about Adobe RGB. Pro number one, Adobe RGB is obviously the larger color space. Larger color space, more colors, awesome stuff. Plus one Adobe RGB. It's also the standard for commercial publishers and users. So if you're printing for magazines or if you're shooting for magazines or catalogs or anything that's going to be professionally printed, Adobe RGB is definitely for you. Plus one Adobe RGB. It's also going to give you the best results if you're going to process your images. If you are into post-processing or manipulating your colors and all that stuff, Obviously, you're going to want to have as many colors as possible, and having as many colors as possible means shooting in Adobe RGB plus one. All right, now that you know all the good, here's the bad. If you're shooting straight out of the camera, Adobe RGB, the colors can look flat and boring. Now, wait a minute. They can't look boring. If they look boring, it's definitely not the color space's fault. It's your fault. Minus one Adobe RGB. It does not, and I repeat, does not work for the web, TV, or any direct from camera printing. If you're shooting for the web or a DVD or any of that stuff, you need to shoot an sRGB because that is the standard, quote unquote. Minus one, Adobe RGB. The, probably the worst part about shooting Adobe RGB is that you're out of the standard realm. Your printer must know about Adobe RGB to get the best results. What I'm saying is the guy behind the counter at Walmart, no offense Walmart employees, is probably not going to be uh, knowledgeable about Adobe RGB damaging your images. So, what's the score? Ah, who cares? Which one to choose is very, very easy. Shoot sRGB if you want the best results directly from the camera, you print at home or at somewhat unprofessional lab, or you're shooting for the web or anything that is gonna be shown on a monitor or TV. Shoot Adobe RGB if you shoot raw and manipulate all of your images anyway. If your images are gonna be commercially published, magazine, book, etc or you just have to have the best no matter what. This is Andy with lightenupandshoot.com, over and out.